Today we're going back to a time when medical practices were still in their infancy. A time when medicine was more like a scene from a horror movie than the science we know today. It was also the era when the first recorded blood transfusion took place and it involved none other than the Pope himself. Hey and welcome. My name is Kara and I tell stories while I do my chores and other stuff. So today's chore has me cleaning out my desk. It's a really old desk, but I love it. We found it at a resale shop a few years ago, and it was in really bad shape. So we brought it home, took it apart, sanded it all down, and then we stained it a really nice, pretty black stain. I really love the look of it, but it just needed a little bit of reorganization and then just a little bit of love, and it needed to be shined up a little bit with some dusting and things like that. So that's what I did for my chore. And for today's story, if you've never heard the story behind the first blood transfusion, you are in for a real treat. Treat is not the correct word for that. Anyway, if you don't know the history, buckle up because it is shocking. Here we go. So, we all know what a blood transfusion is, right? It's the transfer of blood or blood products from one person to another to replace lost blood or to treat certain medical conditions. It's a medical procedure that has saved countless lives over the years. The concept of blood transfusion dates back to ancient times when blood was believed to be the source of life. One of the most intriguing stories in the history of blood transfusions is the tale of the first recorded blood transfusion to a human being, which happened to be Pope Innocent VIII. This story is a controversial one that has been debated by historians and medical experts for centuries. Here's the story. In 1492, Pope Innocent VIII was dying. His physician was desperate to save his life, so in a desperate attempt to cure the Pope's illness, he decided to conduct the first recorded blood transfusion in history. Now, prepare yourself and don't listen to this while eating. You've been warned. So, we don't know how the Pope was given this blood. Some sources state it was through transfusion, but others say he actually drank the blood of several young men. Yikes. At first, they thought the Pope was improving, but things got bad and he slipped into a coma. Basically, the blood transfusion was not successful and the Pope died a few days later. Now, it's important to note that this story is controversial. Some historians reject the story outright and they argue that the idea of blood transfusion could not have even entered the mind of any person not knowing about the circulation of blood. Apparently, the fact that blood circulates was not published until 1628. Despite this, though, there are many medical historians that do mention this story as the first recorded blood transfusion. And I'm going to say something really gross here. If they didn't know that blood flowed through veins and such, it might be more likely that he did actually drink that blood. I don't even want to think about that further. You can draw your own conclusions. Okay, now let's talk about what happened with transfusions after that because that's really interesting and kind of freaky as well. So it actually wasn't until 1628 that an English physician named William Harvey first discovered the circulation of blood, which was a significant milestone in the history of medicine. Then the first direct blood transfusion to a human was performed in 1667 by the French physician Jean-Baptiste Denis. He was very interested in the idea of blood transfusion and began experimenting first with animals. So prepare yourselves. He then experimented by giving a feverish young man approximately 12 ounces of blood taken from a lamb. That's how this guy rolled, I guess. Anyway, the young man recovered quickly and shortly afterward, Dennis performed other transfusions that also appeared to be successful. However, the idea of transfusing blood from one person to another person was still highly controversial at the time. The controversy stemmed from several different factors. For one, people just didn't understand the nature of blood and the risks associated with transfusions. There were also religious and moral objections to the practice, and many believed that it was a violation of God's will to transfer blood from one person to another. So, his third and fourth transfusions did not go well at all. The third patient died shortly after the transfusion, and the fourth died while a transfusion was still in progress. The fourth patient's wife even accused Dennis of murder, and he went before a court, 
and was eventually cleared of any wrongdoing. However, the court ruled to ban blood transfusions. The French Parliament, the Catholic Church, and the Royal Society soon passed their own bans on blood transfusions. The ban, however, was not universally enforced, and many physicians continued to perform transfusions in secret. In 1818, James Blundell, a British obstetrician, performed the first successful transfusion of human blood to a patient for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. He used the patient's husband as a donor. He extracted approximately four ounces of blood from the husband's arm and using a syringe successfully transfused the wife. Between 1825 and 1830, he performed 10 transfusions, five of which proved beneficial to his patients. They didn't say anything about the other five, though. He also devised various instruments for performing transfusions. Now, in those early days of blood transfusions, doctors used a bunch of different methods to transfer blood from one person to another. Some of these methods were very dangerous and often led to severe reactions, including death. But as medical knowledge and technology advanced, doctors began to develop safer techniques that actually worked much better. One of the key developments was the discovery of blood types and the use of blood typing to match donors with recipients. In 1901, Austrian physician Carl Landsteiner discovered the first three human blood groups, which paved the way for safer and more effective blood transfusions. We now know there was no way to perform a blood transfusion safely prior to Carl Landsteiner's discovery of blood types. Mixing blood from two non-compatible blood types causes an immune response that can be fatal. So here's something interesting too, and some of you may already know this, and, and I know it only because I'm Rh negative, but if you're Rh negative and are pregnant, you're likely to get a series of shots called Rogam. And if you're a nurse, you can correct me. I have no idea if I said that correctly. Anyway, you get one when you're pregnant because one in five Rh negative people will become sensitive to the Rh positive factor if you don't receive the Rogam shot. If that happens, then the baby can be born with one or more of the following things. Anemia, a lack of healthy red blood cells, or even heart failure. Now, you'll also get a shot after you give birth just in case the baby's blood mixes with yours. So, you get one shot when you're pregnant to protect the baby, and then you get a shot after you've given birth to protect you. So, I don't remember the shots hurting at all, so if you ever have to do that, don't panic about it. I don't even remember it, so they must not hurt. Okay, let's continue. So, another important development was the use of anticoagulants to prevent blood from clotting during transfusions. In 1914, Adolf Houston, or Huston, I'm not sure how to say his name, he discovered that sodium citrate could be used to help store blood to be transfused later on and safely to patients on the battlefield. Overall, the development of blood transfusion techniques has been a long and complex process involving the contributions of many medical professionals over the years. Today, blood transfusions are a routine part of medical care, but they have saved countless lives around the world. So the next time you visit a hospital or you have to give blood or you're donating blood, remember the chilling tale of the first blood transfusion and how far we've come from that. Our journey through history is a reminder of the resilience of science and the pursuit of knowledge, even though the path was pretty eerie. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Do you think the story about the Pope is true? Do you think it's embellished? I want to know your thoughts. If you have any questions about anything, any of the cleaning or organizing I did, let me know. If there's something you want me to do a video on, let me know about that too. I hope you have a good rest of your day or night wherever you are. Remember to embrace curiosity, conquer those chores, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.